Hi there, everybody. Welcome to the Blink Podcast. It's Darren here. Really looking forward to bringing you episode number five, season three. And today's topic is probably one that is most important in challenging our business environment right now. How to grow networks, how to really develop our networks, and how to keep our networks to grow our business into this challenging market that we are right now. So good to have Jonathan with us. How are you, mate? Hey, Darren. How are you? Good. I'm trying to get my words out today. I'm struggling with the pronunciation of some key words. The pronunciation, even. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Great start to the show, everybody. But T, I tell you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if we stumble our words as long as you get the value in today's topic. Oh, my goodness. In so much a need in the market. We were just talking today biggie. about... What is the constant problem that's being raised across all our clients collectively? And yep. uh, there were so many different problems, but the one solution all results in how good's your network and how yeah. good are the relationships in your network. And it solves everything. It really does. So today we're focusing this whole episode on giving you guys watching and listening across all the Apple podcasts and Google podcasts and Spotify and finding the show on YouTube, we're going to give you the keys to success to not only building and expanding your network and why you need it, but how to make better relationships with those already in it so that you can push through this. It's like a sludgy, sort of confused market, isn't it? It's a bit tricky, but you know, you yep. get a couple of good deals and you'll forget all about the little problems and just move through and we all know it's cyclical. We all know it's going to move through this cycle into a better cycle soon. And I think once it turns, it's going to turn pretty quick and be pretty impressive across the industries we focus on, finance, uh, automotive, real estate, of course, retail. Uh, I think the poor retail is getting flogged at the moment, but times will yep. turn once. Yes. Because humans just love to spend. They love to shop and they're just sitting there at the moment protecting it but once they get some freedom and some confidence that this has passed i think retail is going to bounce back pretty strong yeah i agree I agree and i think the two the big part is and you said it just a minute ago was that you know one or two deals right now actually will get you through like the challenging environment that we've got to be able to sort of set up your environment that you know if you need one or two deals a week or you need one or two deals a month or you need an extra one or five deals over the whole month, then actually working on your network is actually where these extra deals are. Because I don't, and you and I have had this conversation often is, is right now in the market that we've got at the moment, you actually have to dig down in the conversations because generally people's first response in this type of market is no thanks. No, not, not happy, not interested, don't need your product, not really in a position to buy your product. And that's their standard response. So for us to change that thinking or change that discussion, you've got to dig down in the conversations and you've also got to be doing it with the people that you've got already existing relationships with. Well, the needs are still there. Like, oh, if you've totally. got a decent, the needs are still there. Um, yep. And so it's just that extra layer of fear that yep. really, if you look at it, mainstream media has put it on there. Uh, yep. Politicians have put it on there. I mean, it drives me mad. We've got this constant argument over here in Australia where politicians come out and say, we don't have enough energy for the grid. We don't have enough energy to supply and power yeah. everyone. Get ready, yeah, for summer. Get, get ready for summer brownouts. And you sit yep. there and go, hold on a minute, how much money have we invested the last 10 years for renewables and new energy sectors? And yep. hold on, we're facing a shortage? And all yep. that does, all that chatter does is allows everyone to put up their prices in both yep. the energy sector and anyone else who uses energy for a product, right? So they all so, go, yep. my bills are going up, so I'm going to put my prices up, and then it's us who have to pay for it. So if they just stopped this and, chat, would be right. And when the prices have gone up on the products, that affects our inflation rate, which means the reserve banks then hike interest rates 
which then that actually exacerbates the problem within our house environments. All the costs are, yeah. are being affected, and and when you start looking, and I, I I mean our two countries are very very linked in this exact area at the moment, and I think both countries are really trying to fight them fight their way out of that inflationary issue and, and inflationary pressures but when you look at some of the fundamentals that are causing it you're going man oh man it's sort of like we're feeding the the, the beast that's eating us it's it's crazy you could almost fix inflation by just dropping power and petrol prices yeah 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 i mean literally i mean yeah. but the, uh, the weird thing is uh, I mean, the, the petroleum market at the moment is so mixed it's almost like the real estate market i've got a yeah. I've got a service station up the road from me, dollar seventy eight today a litre. Fantastic. Right. The next one over, same brand, same brand, two dollars twenty. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you just work through that. Coming from the same refinery, probably the same truck, yeah. and I you know. sit there and go, I, don't, I just don't make sense of it. But anyway, yeah. that's that's the challenge that we have to overcome today, and and I think. Uh, yeah, we were chatting earlier today. If we can just smooth it out for some people, help remove yeah. some of these bumps, help them just close one or two deals and all these worries go away. You don't, you know, if you're yeah. busy focusing on hunting that one prize, getting really focused, then you don't need to watch the news because you won't have time. And then you won't get the stress that comes from listening to all the chatter. And yep. we move through it. And I think that is the secret to success today. Those who are almost ignorant to what's going on the people that you speak to and say you know and there was a test last week right oh my god did you hear that donald trump nearly got assassinated and the people who were like looking at you and going oh really i didn't know they're the one they're the luckiest ones in the world because you know they're focused on their business and they're not yeah, being 100%. distracted yep it's the ones yeah, who are like, call. oh, my God, I watched it, and I went back and watched it live, and then this and this. The ones who had all the details about it, you're like, yeah, yeah. And your numbers reflect the fact that you've been watching CNN or CBS <laughs> for the last yeah. six hours. All yeah, right? true. And, and not focused on what you actually need to be doing. Yeah, 100%. So uh, let's get into this. Okay. Today. Let's get into networking yeah. success. What is it, Darren? Tell me about it. So networking is the ability to create new and maintain ongoing relationships with people that are in your market sector or will have a positive benefit to your business, all right? So the piece for me here is just to make sure that we understand that it's the connection with the people that are in the marketplace. And by connection, it means, and I always look at it from the perspective that it's our outreach to create the connection yet there will be some connection coming from the marketplace to our businesses but we all may, always must treat that as a bit of a perk because what i say is we've got to be really conscious that networking is our ability to reach out from our business into the marketplace to the different groups that will benefit our our success but also our ongoing success in our business yeah, it really is. And it can be daunting sometimes um, yep. you know, if you're coming from a different background or maybe um, maybe you're a new offer or a new yep. product. or, or you know, it, There can be all sorts of hurdles that stand in your way, but you know, everyone is new to an industry at some point. And, and like, you just think about it. Imagine you were going into a new marketplace and were uncomfortable about the product or was pitching your product to the marketplace. What are the chances of success? I mean, when it comes to pitching your position in a marketplace when you're brand new, you in fact have to be really pumped and absolutely committed to your product that you can go to the market and say, this is relevant for everybody in that sector or everybody in that market segment, because that's what it takes to get your brand out there in the marketplace. And, and you and I see it all the time in many industries where we will have new participants coming into it and they'll spend three months sort of in the industry and you'll say to them, how big is your networks? How many people have you met? And they're like, oh, well, I haven't really got out there in the market that much and you know i haven't met that many people and i'm thinking to myself if you're not confident to go to the market and really position yourself and your product then the chances are the market isn't really going to care and they're certainly not going to engage with you yeah i think that's a big that is a big one getting in there and how you 
approach them? How, I mean, what are your secrets to success to approaching in? I mean, I was I was here only a few years ago coming into real estate in Melbourne and I felt more uncomfortable with agents in my own town than I did with yeah. agents interstate. And I remember you and I speaking about it. I think it's in one of the episodes of this incredible podcast, the greatest podcast between Australia and New Zealand. Ever. Uh, ever and ever will be. Uh, number one on the Tasman Sea uh, podcast rankings. Yeah, uh, it, uh, always. <laughs> But that was the thing, right? So what I did is um, to get into real estate in a way is I just started creating content that would help real estate agents. Yeah. Yeah. Purely like, hey, do this, do this. I think you should try this. I should try that. And earn some authority before I call. And I still do that today. You tell me to get on the calls. But what I'll do is I'll strategically make, say, a week of content. And then, and then target the people where I know that content. And yeah, I'd even go through the comments and the reactions and ring yep. those people. That's how Love I build it. my network. I engage them right. passively yep. and then ring them just to Love catch it. up. No hard sell. So, so this is the thing. So a, a good question for me to ask you around this then is why do networking then? Why is it so important? Why are, are we talking about this topic today? Because we kind of know what it is, but why is it now in business so important? Because this topic is like everybody's starting to realize that we probably have moved away from it a bit using the social media or, you know, trying to put our message out and hope that the marketplace engages. But I think you and I both know that where we get the most success uh, is we create the content, but we also link it to the relationships or the connections we've got. So, so for me, why do you think we should be using networking more? What do you reckon it does for your business? Well, the only growth you get is through your network. That's 100% it. And I think you touched on something just then about social media originally. And you've got to understand social media is new as a media. Yep. Like it really is. It's, it's 10 years max. Yep. And that's baby. Yeah. Like literally a baby compared to newspapers, radio, advertising, and actually face-to-face yep. -face networking meetings. Like they would have been going on tens hundreds oh. and hundreds of years ago right let's go totally. to the we're gonna we're gonna pack up our horses and our car and we're gonna travel all the way across england to hold court in someone else's castle just to be friends so we can trade pumpkins for potatoes yep that's that's, that's what they would have done but the thing with social media is that we've it's evolved through an era where for the past three or four years you could build your network through awareness on social media. Hey, I'm just aware awareness. of you. Yeah, I'm good just job. Just awareness, right? Yeah, well done. Very good. So it was just awareness would build your network to a degree. But now it's flipped because now everyone's on social media and can create content. You just need your phone. That doesn't mean it's great content, but it's content enough to build awareness. Yes. So the entry, the barrier of entry now uh, for awareness is so low that it doesn't mean you make it into the network circle you well just done. make it into the awareness well circle good job now, so between you and i and what we're talking about um at what point does awareness become network and i think it all comes down to relationship well it, well, it comes down to having a relationship, right? Yeah. And to have a relationship, it's for me to understand you, you to understand me, and both of us have an agreement that you actually mutually have a benefit by being connected, right? And yeah. this is the piece why we do it, is the reason why we do this is because we want to develop those connections and those relationships that for, for people that will a, benefit our business, but also benefit our longer term success in the business. So I always say with relationships, it might not be that you get the business today, it might be in six months, 12 months, three years, five years time, yeah. but that's the advantage of having those stable networks in place. So we just have to be aware that the reason why we network is for that longer term success. And as you've just said, uh, it's a it's a process that we have to be able to build into our business consistently. That's the next one, right? You yep. got to be if you got to be purposeful. 
You can't yeah. just expect it to grow passively. And sure, you will move through the world and meet people. It's almost impossible not to, uh, even if they're virtual or digital connections. Uh, if you are in the world, you're going to be meeting new people. But to build your network, it's got to be active and purposeful. They've got to know yep. why you're there. Um, there's no use hiding it. Yeah, you've got to have different levels of friendships, right? So you've got your family and you've got your close friends, but then everyone knows you're building a business network. Yep. And they know that eventually it's going to come into, hey, I can help you or you can help me. Totally. The the best ones, as you just said, is where it's mutually beneficial. You can help me and I can help you. Uh, As a consultant, as you and I are, often... It works the other way, right? It works only in our, hey, we can come and help you, but you've got to pay for us to help you. Yeah. But if you can demonstrate and only speak about value and demonstrate your value, then they don't even yep. worry about your fee because it's a fraction of what value you're actually bringing to the business. And the success that's the challenge. that it generates. Yeah, yep. that's the challenge of a consultant. So, yep. um, you know, moving from that awareness to being a valued member of a network, having a valuable relationship. And I know people, high performance, high net worth individuals who talk about the value of the friendship. They put like a dollar value on that friendship. Hey, I can't upset that guy or I can't make that move because it'll counter what I've already got with that guy. And he is worth, I don't know, $10.5 million a year to me. Yep, that's it. But you see, but that's where you're being actively aware of exactly the the, the depths and the strength of those relationships. Mm. And sometimes when we're developing relationships or looking at developing our networks, we've got to understand that sometimes this is going to take time, right? It's going to take you time to understand those connection points and the topics that will be important. But that means you have to be active in this space. You've got Mm. to be making sure that you are going into the marketplace for the purposeful uh, uh, direction of getting new contacts. I didn't say business. I said just getting new contacts. Mm. And that's a very important part of starting in that networking area. And I think social media allows us... um, Yes. Maintain the relationship. Yep. Like, yep. Maintain that relationship without it being too much of an investment of time. So if yep. you think about it, I mean, how many people could you go and meet for coffee in one day? You probably got to, without being rude and not making it a race, you probably got to give at least each person half an hour minimum. Totally. Right? For it to be value, a valuable effort. Yeah. To get. Uh, on the phone, you could probably halve that. And if Easily. you would give people 15-minute yep. phone calls, how many of those yep. can you do a day? I'm not yep. going to do the maths. But I'm, I'm a journalist. So I don't, don't do maths. Um, but then think about how many people could you send a text message or a messenger message to in a day. Yep. yep. Right? Now, here's, it's sort of like a scale. The person-to-person meeting is way more valuable, but takes up more time. Love it. The phone call, not as valuable, right? But not as much time, but still more valuable than the text message or the social media message, which is low value, but easier to perform. And so I think when we talk about networking, it's not one way or the other. It's how you combine those three steps. Yeah, love it. To put people almost into a funnel uh, so that you're maintaining that connection. Now, what you actually put in your conversations or your content or your message, really important. Yeah. I mean, that's it's just crazy because it leads into the next bit that we're talking about. What's the yep. impression that you leave? You know, are you only hitting them up? Hey, I, I'm down on my numbers this month. Hey, can we get together so I can try and sell you again on the thing that you didn't want to buy last month because you're not ready? Are you ready yet? Come on. 100%. It's It's got to be human. You've got to connect. You can't fake it. And you've actually got to want to have a relationship with these people if you're going to go out and do it. But you think about it. If someone approaches us, and I'm sure that every one of our listeners is exactly the same as this, when anybody comes into your network environment, you will instantly make 
an impression opinion. You'll go, does this person fit? Is this person somebody that I feel like fits my network that I'll remain in con connection with? And, and as you said then, about the value, does it bring value to you in your life? Because if it doesn't, then it, it, your, your ability to create a network or create a relationship is actually going to fall by the wayside very quickly because there is no real reason to hold that together. So what's the value that you're bringing when it comes to that component of, hey, I, I've made the connection. Now, is there an imp what's the impression here? And is it positive for me to maintain an ongoing relationship? Yeah, two really interesting points I want to make on that. A, the LinkedIn spam messages that you get. Yeah, yep, does right. my head in hey, I'm really looking forward to doing work with you or starting work with you. And you're like, oh, did I sign up to something that I don't remember? I didn't know. Like, so bad. But even uh, I had an incident earlier this week where um, I'd been referred to someone uh, for my services. Uh, I spent time on the phone with them. Uh, but then, you know, it just was pretty obvious that they weren't, a hundred percent sold into the into the approach. Fair enough. It's not for everybody. Um, you know, I'm pretty video based. If you're not prepared to get on camera, then it's probably not going to work. Um, and so, and then there was a few other things where I'm like, well, I just don't think you're going to fit in the into my network with the other people that I'm dealing yeah. with. So how, how do I bring you into a mastermind if you're yeah. not, you know, if you don't believe in what everyone else in the group believes in? Like, it's just not. Not going to work. Gonna, we're just not going to gel. So yeah. I just passed. I just yeah, passed. Going, yeah. and, and I put my network at the top of the list. I want to protect my network. And so okay. you've got to be really careful who you let in. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to ask you a question because we haven't actually discussed this part and I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. Okay. How do you make a really good impression? So if you're going out into your network and growing new connections, yeah. how do you cre create a really good impression? Yeah, I think there's two things you have to yeah, two things you have to do. Maybe three, actually, thinking on the spot. Three things that you got to do. You got to have empathy to their problem. Yep. Now you don't you don't get empathy to their problem unless you're prepared to listen. Yep. So first you got to listen, so you can develop empathy for their problem. Yeah, And then to make a really good impression, you've got to have a level of smarts or sophistication around the solution that you offer. Good. Yep. That's like the, that. That's the three things I do. Listen, care about the problem, so that proves that you've listened, and then yep. be, have smarts around the solution that you offer. It can't just be cookie cutter. It can't just be, hey, I've got this program. Everyone does the same thing. It's well, I've got this, but if we tweak it this way, it'll actually hit the three problems that you just mentioned five minutes ago. Yep, nice. Yep. Remove the pain. What yeah, do you like that. If I was to ask that question back to you. So, so I think for me, number one is energy. So when you meet somebody, there is that understanding that do you fit, right? And if you come in and you're rah, 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 and this is amazing and I'm going to help you and you've got someone who's a very much a quieter person and much more re reserved, I reckon with, that... How do you adjust, uh, do you adjust yeah. to those sorts of people? Well, I have to adjust, mate. I have to slow <laughs> it down a tad. I mean, that could be hard for you because you are a go, 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 right? Do you Probably. struggle, and, with, the, and do you struggle also, with those sorts of people when you walk in yeah. and you've got... Well, so those people struggle with me, to be honest. Yeah. Like they go, look, yeah, I, I love it, Darren, but I don't know whether I can keep up. And I'm like, well, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the piece for me is not about keeping up. It's just to be able to define the components that we need to get moving on and actually put in place. And then there's that accountability piece that, that get, becomes a, a key component. But for me, it's about, you know, if you're building a new network, try and match up and understand their energy level. Because if you get it about right, it actually comes together and, and you actually have a personal connection at that point. The second one for me is just understand the other person's world a bit more before you start pitching anything. So actually 
questions about their world, their life, their family, the job that they do, the challenges in the job. And as you said, but but notice how I'm widening out the context of the conversation, because and until I get a better understanding of the person and who they are and where they are in the world, then no matter what solution I have, they don't have any ownership of A, that solution and B, that solution coming from me. So first of all, I've got to really do understand their world a bit better. And then my last one is you've got to create a, a an above expectation impression. I always believe in this. Like most of us all have an opinion. When you first meet someone, you'll have an opinion of them very quickly. What you have to do in those conversations is to elevate the outcome or give them that sense of, wow, this person is higher skilled. This person does present more value. This person is somebody that I should stay in touch with. And it's got to be above the expectation that they are naturally had when they first met you. Yeah, I think point number two hits home for me. Obviously, uh, had some sad news in the family recently. Yes. And um, it was incredible, actually. The day, the day, so, you know, it got announced, um, but the day it was the passing of a family member. Uh, don't worry, uh, we're, we're okay. Um, the day after, and the person knew, and told I told them the news. I said, oh, you know, it's probably not the best time. For me, uh, you know, we're going through this in the family at the moment. And, uh, yeah, they were very polite on the phone. But maybe a day or two later, I start getting messages of, you know, can you, you know, let's talk. No. Uh, no. Talk. You know, yeah, there was an event coming up. Uh, and then, you sorry, know, another... sorry, sorry. There's my point. There, there, you've just sold me there, right? Mm. If you are not listening and understanding the other party's position before you try to build a, a relationship for an ongoing network, if you don't understand that that person's had something traumatic in their life and start pitching them two days after that message, mm. you are tone deaf. Well, I would have thought that I just after that news, I would be a pass. Like, yep. just, just leave me alone. Yeah. Um, the fact that the event of what was taking place was on the same day as the funeral. Probably made yes. it. A, probably made it a. I'm sorry, but I'm otherwise occupied. Um, yeah. Scenario. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just that lack of that. You know, that lack of understanding um, really has changed your yep. opinion. Like it really does put you on the back feet or the back foot. So yeah, you got to be aware of this stuff, and, and you know. Yep. It comes from listening at the start. Hey, how's your life? How's things going? It's about being human so you can gather all that data so that you ne then know how to navigate the conversation where maybe you're talking about work. Maybe you're talking well, about engaging services. Like, unless like seriously, like that's it. Like if you only take that message from today's podcast, that bit right there, that there, just explains networking 100%. And I think that's where a lot of people nowadays are missing this, this concept. You have just articulated perfectly what this whole area is about. Brilliant. It's data collection, Darren. It's all data cool. collection. Love it. And and I think also, I think the other thing you have to approach is that just because someone's in your network doesn't necessarily mean they have to do business with you. But, but they probably and, won't until they need you. Yeah, but it also, you know, you can have someone in your network who you never do business with, but they might yes. be your best referrer of all time. Yep, yep, 100%. Yep, absolutely. Yep, gold. I mean, that's the other thing. Uh, yeah, I've got people in my network who I still ring monthly. They're on the rotation for a monthly phone call. I know they're never going to do business with me, but I know they have conversations where my name comes up. And, uh, can they, I also and make, they bring my name up. Yep. Can I also make the point that I've had situations like this for, and I've got someone in mind particularly that, you know, I've, I've had relationship conversations in terms of where they're at and what they've been doing for six years, mate, six years. Yeah, right. And then all of a sudden out of left field, they go, 
Darren, could you come and help us with our office because we need some help about this, that, or the next thing, right? And I know for a fact I would never have got that opportunity had I not put the six years of effort in earlier on. Now, you might say, well, uh, six years, that's a bit crazy, isn't it? But actually, exactly what you're saying, like having people in your network that you you don't have an immediate expectation of any business, but they are important to be connected with, actually helps that long-term position, right? Why do you think it took six years? Was it a, I, was it trust? Was it them not willing to take a leap on investing in themselves? Like there's so many reasons why people don't take action. Yeah. Is there a big, a big idea? Um, I think it was, was, there was two parts. One, they always had a flavor of people that they used historically. So they want, they sort of carried on that same type. Um, I am also somebody that tries to make people a bit more accountable. And sometimes when the person that probably needs to be accountable is the person who's employing you, sometimes that's where it gets challenging, right? And and so, um, but the piece of work we did was seriously fantastic. And there's ongoing work for me now all the time in that space. So it's, it's just like, again, when you listen and you're aware of their situation and their problems. And, you, you know, when I talked to them over the last six years, I knew by that conversations, I knew exactly what their problems were. I knew exactly what the, the challenges were and what the best solutions probably were going to be to fix it. But I had to wait until they decided that that's what they wanted to do. They're going to want the help. They'd friend zoned you. A little bit. Yeah. Well, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, I would say, yeah. I'm really happy to have conversations, but when it comes to actually making the changes or putting the infrastructure in place to make the direction that they needed to go, they were very, very nervy about that because that was a bit outside their comfort zone. But now that we've gone down the path, started to go down the path, it's going really well and it's starting to make some real positive changes and they're loving it. So it's like, hey, we got there in the end. That's good. Well done. And I assume that looking back over the six years, the amount of effort that you put in to maintain that relationship has been well worth the oh. uh, the engagement that you have now. Oh, hugely so. Hugely yeah. so. And, and then, like, this is the part where, again, in today's immediate and and that fast-paced world we live, if you don't get the, re the reward or the response from whatever you do, it was a waste of time. Well, you know, in business today, I just think it's got even more important that you have a longer-term strategy, that you hold those relationships, and that's what gives you the work down the track. Yeah, and I just think, you know, with the world we're entering into, AI, automation. Oh, um, totally. You know, you know, people are going to be creating videos of themselves speaking, yep. but not actually them, and then they're going to mass email blast those out to you know, the 1,000 or 2,000 people they have on their mailing list. There's going to be yep. no intimacy in it at all. There's going to be no ah. trying to understand your actual scenarios. It's just going to be all just shortcuts after shortcuts Pitch. after shortcuts. And so yep. the people, and I'm starting this movement, Darren, I'm, I'm going to start a, a movement with a watermark that's going to be, uh, it's going to declare that, you know, all my this content, content. All my content is 100% human. Yeah, uh, nice. I, that, I think the 100% human movement is going to be just so powerful uh, in the next two to three years. And, you know, I think if you're watching this or listening to this, start thinking about how can you be more human in your network. Yeah. It's almost at the point now where I, um, uh, if I have a cancelled meeting, if someone cancels on me and I'm left somewhere, say say I'm left in the city, I've got a bank of meetings and someone cancels in the in the middle, and I've got that spare hour. It's like, yep. man, how many people can I reach out in that hour? How many times? Can, and you know, I've now got the opportunity to just randomly reach out to people and maintain my network. Messages, phone calls, whatever it is, just bang, bang, bang. I just, just, just want to make... I just want to make the point to our listeners who have been on this journey of the podcast that we've been on for the last three years is just to recap those sentences from Jonathan Craig's mouth and even just replay them over and over again in your own head because yeah. that has been a journey and I'm so yeah. proud that you are, are doing what you're doing, mate, because that, cold that call is... Refusal, former cold call refusalist. 
right here. Now, takes an hour of his time when he's got a gap and now just connects with people just to check in. I mean, that is the best networking success you can have. That's awesome. All right. I'm going to do the last one. All right. The last one on this one is likability. And the reason why likability for me is really important is if you're not likable, it's really hard to build a network, right? If you're not someone that people want to connect with, that they like connecting with, that they feel positive after the connection, seriously, it's really hard to build networks. And, you know, when you've got the, you know, people that are really down on their luck, that are really struggling with the world, that are really depressed on what they're, what's happening in their own lunchbox, they're not happy with watching, you know, Netflix last night, it didn't go well, and they're in the environment, and you're going, seriously, how do you expect other people to want to connect with you and, and actually have an ongoing relationship when it feels like you're the energy sucker that's taking the entire living force out of me every time I meet you for coffee? Yeah. I think there's a lesson in this, you know, from politicians. Yep. Politicians who get booted out. Yeah, they're amongst the most unpopular people on the planet, particularly yep. in networks, right? Uh, yep. Our guy, Dan the Man, uh, Chairman Dan, as they used to call him, and yeah, even probably Jacinta to a degree, oh, right? Not on the, to a degree. On the nose. At, at but the they worst always, degree. But they always yep. go on and find themselves into nice business positions and they continue to work. So yep. you've got to be fairly unlikable for you not to be able to find somewhere to do business yes but i do say if you want to be in the middle of the bell curve because i always talk about the bell curve you're going to have people at the extremes right and what you want to be is is likable to that middle group you want to be likable to the middle because you, you know that's where most of your clients and most of the people will sit so just being able to ring up and being likable to the fact that you've got a positive approach you've got a positive sense of energy about you you're someone that's interested in them and you'll build those conversations conversations around actually it's not just about the sale it's about life and the future and me keeping in touch that's what will build your success definitely now but what i'm saying is you got to work pretty hard to be unlikable you've got to be pretty hard you've i mean you've got to be pretty you, you've got to have a Seriously, level of self have you been around some real estate offices well yeah i don't find too many people who are super unlikable there's lots of people who aren't my type but you know, there are other people's types. Yeah, so there's someone for everyone. I mean, you know, my work focuses around the 17 different personality types in the world, and so there's a personality for everybody. You just got to middle of the tribe, I suppose. Middle of it. Just middle of the bell curve, mate. Middle of the bell curve. Oh, so anyway, just in conclusion to that point, hey, please bring an energy game. Please bring positivity. Please bring a longer term engagement and interest in their world and in lives. And and then you have that sense that you are likable. You're someone that can be seen as helpful. You can create a really good introduction of your product if you need to. And, and it's that likability that means that if the client says no, no thanks, Thanks, not now, not not ready, that you're not actually any, you're not changing any, you're still that likable, energetic character that actually you still want to stay connected with. And and I think, you know, it's well, really important that you yeah. do that. The Suki Lala on the phone, that if they don't get the sale on the first follow-up, oh, and then all God. of a sudden don't call back ever again. I mean, we see that uh, in oh. real estate all the time, right? So oh. we see... Yeah, you know, these dead lists in real estate agents that agents haven't called these people back for years. Yeah, you know, for and then wonder why they've got a network. Yeah, because they didn't say yes the last time, so they leave them alone. I mean, yeah, that's amazing. I mean, I've got one question, and it's probably one that's hard to answer, but we're gonna I'm gonna ask it. How big do you think someone's network needs to be? Big. As big as you can so make it. So the reason why I say, doing, I suppose, but well, yeah, but happen. but I also say in the way of business today, growing and maintaining a network is probably easier now than it's ever been. Right. Mm -hmm. So in the older days where it was paper, it was a Rolodex on your desk. It was a dial dial phone. Mm -hmm. you, you might be able to manage 100, 200, 500 people. Right. That, that would be it. Whereas these days with this 
you know CRM systems that we've got with the quality of the phone, the technology in the phone, the ability to, to communicate using the social media platforms, you should be able to maintain now a very, very big network. But you see, and I'm just going to say this because I think it's really, some people need to hear it. The only reason your network isn't as big as it should be is because you haven't created the network and you haven't reached out on those first connection points to say, g'day, how are you? I'm new to your network and I want to just connect and show you what I can do or just be interested in your world. That's the piece for me right now that we've got to really get a handle on because the systems are there to manage a big network, but we have actually got to get those first engagements with the marketplace to create that that list of people to network with. Yeah, I, I think that's right. And I think there's just simple things you can do early on. I think the earlier you act on connecting with someone or following up, yeah, the stronger the relationship is. So, you know, for example, I met a guy yesterday. Uh, he's in the finance space. Uh, he wanted to connect with me, uh, so I gave him my gave him my number on the phone. You know, we we made our phones kiss and they shared each other's details. You know, I'll follow him up today with a text and say, "Hey, great to meet you yesterday." Um, yeah, you know, I'm away the next week or whatever. I'm going to the Gold Coast, uh, but when I get back, I want to catch up with you. Yep. And all of yep, a sudden, I'm more on his radar than just yep. sharing numbers. Love it. I've love given it. him a little bit of information about my life uh, yep. and where I be, and and that's it. And I think it's just the simple things that will make the big impact here. Yep, you don't have to it. be sending big packages and prizes and and no. bottles of wine to everyone all the time. You don't want no. to be annoying them. It's just no. simply treating humans as humans. Hey, I was here today, and it made you know. And I have this question for you. I, I sometimes do that. I ask questions of my network. Yeah, nice. I make, Love it. I, I use their val- use their expertise, uh, and hunt answers from them. Uh, yep. As a way of you know, using them, not using them, but uh, empowering them in my network yep. as the expert in that space. Hundred percent. That's a great method. Oh, yeah, a great method. And it's just another way of being able to, A, show your value in that space and also your interest in your network. So you're actually interested in what other people think. It's it's such an important thing to do. Absolutely. Yeah, and once you start exchanging value like that, letting them give you their value without, yep. yeah, without it being, you yeah, just informal, hey, hey, what do you reckon this would, how do you reckon this would work? Or from your perspective, what do you reckon about this property? Yeah, or yep. this loan or this move in the banking sector, like whatever it is, give me your insights. Because guess what happens? When they then want information about the area where you're an expert, They'll guess, ask. Who, they come, guess who they come to? Yep. And then that builds yep. trust and the relationship flourishes. And then when there's Love the it. time for problems to be solved that need a financial exchange to make it happen, you're in there. You're in the, you're in the box seat. Love it. I think this has been a okay. great episode. That's, that's so important, right? I'm just going to give you three or four key things to help you be able to network more successfully, right? right well, I won't, ra- I won't wrap up the episode just yet then. I'll let it go. I'm just going to give you a couple of practical things, right? Number one for me is you've got to get people's names and you've got to remember people's names. I am famous for not remembering people's names, right? That's one of my, I, I struggle when I meet lots of people to remember people's names. So the well, ability I to, to refer have, you, I need to refer you to my uh, four-time Australian memory champion yeah, friend who's in my network to yeah, help there you, you go. because he's a specialist in that. So, so the piece for me is I always try and is when I meet people and I remember their name is just to put it in my phone, right? Just to, to make a note and put it in your phone so that you've got a reference point of remembering people's details. Because again, do you take a photo? Do you take a photo and then put their name on it and then you walk around, and you're swiping through the photos. You're like, oh, George. It's you, not right? quite that bad. It's you not put quite on some that weight, bad. George. It's not quite that bad, but I just say have a method, whatever your method is of recording their name. Another one for me is to be able to put their name and mobile number into your phone as quickly as possible so that what happens whenever they ring, you know who it is. You can, you've got that information and again, it allows you to text. Nothing Another worse than one, that mystery number. And you, nah. type, you go to the internet to type it in to work out who it is. And actually something interesting happened yesterday. 
I was given a number. Uh, yep. I was given a number. No, a number called my phone. And I was like, oh, is this a scam? Is it someone trying to sell me solar panels? You know, what yep. is it? And I typed the number into Google. And usually it sends you to like a gray pages where you have yes. to pay a subscription and then it'll give you the number. This didn't happen. What actually happened was that AI scanned the internet and matched the number to a for sale board, which then gave me the name of the person. How good is that? Da, da, da. That's, so if you've got the number yeah. and you've got the name, you will be able to match that stuff up. So that's, that's a cracker. Yeah. Number two is when you're networking, have some set topics that you're really good with. So, um, and, and in New Zealand, rugby is a good one. Right. So just be skilled up with enough content that wherever you go, you know, rugby is normally going to be a, a topic of conversation lightly into politics. And, and I'm not saying go deep in politics because that can really bite you in the backside, but just have an awareness of what's in the news so that you know what's going on and what that allows you. And, and also industry news as well. So just again, be careful not too deep, but understand what's happening in the sector that you're talking to. So what you've got yourself there is three pretty easy topics of conversation that you can fall back or go to to help you carry on the conversation. So it's good to be able to have those topics. Another one is to understand personality profiling, and you said that before as well, is just understanding that your personality, how it matches up with other uh, different styles of personality, because once you can pick the other style, you know how to match with yours, and that also makes you very uh, likable in terms of the other party as well. So that they'll get a sense of that actually fits. Um, use LinkedIn. So if you meet somebody or you want to meet somebody, LinkedIn's a great way of just creating an initial connection and to be able to further a, a conversation. So if you bump into somebody at an event, to be able to, you know, the next day, to be able to send a message through LinkedIn to go, hey, it was great meeting you last night. I've just added you to my network. If they sign up with that, then you know they're in your network. If they don't, then you'll know the other but but it does let you be able to create a, a, a good communication before you get into too much of a hey i'll text you i'll call you let's go for coffee um so i think that's that's quite important um and then the last one for me is when it comes to networking uh, a trick that i was told a long time ago is called question cubed and question cubed is the ability to be able to have a conversation and as the listener, all you do is listen to the answer the person gave you and then ask another question that relates to the answer they gave you. Now, when they give you the next answer, you ask another question that relates to the answer that they just gave you. So what it means is you as the listener ask three questions before you say, I think, or let me tell you about my world, or I had this experience once as well, where get rid of those pieces because you have to ask three questions first. Three questions to the person you're listening to, and as soon as you do that, you watch it change because the depth of the conversation gets lower and you'll understand their situation way better before you do the, oh, I had a similar situation or I know what you mean, and then the conversation reverts back to you again. So three questions in a networking scenario, and I tell you, it just makes your networking success grow really, really quickly. Yeah, I don't think there's anything worse than when you're speaking to someone or they ask you a Hi, how are you? And, you? and you start answering the question and then they completely ignore your answer and just yep. go straight into their elevator pitch. Yeah. Oh, I, Jonathan, how was your weekend? How was your weekend, yeah. mate? Yeah, it was fantastic. You know, Where I did you go? To, oh, I went down to the beach, went to the hockey. Oh, mate, we went to the beach as well. One of the things that we love doing is going down to the beach and then we go to this beach and we like that beach because we take a spade and shovel and we talk about you know making sandcastles at this beach and that beach and, and that's what we like to do, but we don't want to stay there too late because we want to get home at night time for dinner. And all I of run a sudden, retreats at the beach. And, and I run all retreats of a sudden, at the beach. You should come. What you do you come think and, now? You should pay and come to my retreat on the beach. Like that, yeah, that, it just drives me. I just sit there and my brain is, I don't know. It just takes the whole conversation away from why I was interested in asking you about your weekend to the mm. whole conversation was about why I, you know, about me and what my thoughts were. So the ability for us to actually make sure that we listen, we ask good questions, 
and it helps us build an amazing network. So, you know, I hope those things help our listeners and, and actually give some practical stuff that they can try and take into their networking uh, environment over the next few weeks. Absolutely. It's so important in this sluggish time. Uh, if you've got uncertainty in your world, yep. uh, this, this, this will always reap a reward. This sort yep. of act. Uh, 100%. It's a great topic. Sure is. So uh, thank you, guys. Uh, all wrapped up. Nothing else to add, Darren? That's me, mate. That's a great, really good practical session. And I hope uh, people can actually now think about how they're going to apply that in their business tomorrow morning. That's it. So thank you, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, this is the Blink Podcast Season 3, Episode 5. Of course, please, if you get any value out of these conversations between us two knuckleheads, uh, go and give this podcast a rating. Uh, whichever platform you're on, give it a rating. Uh, rate it however you want. Any sort of interaction helps more people find the podcast. We're trying to grow it. We're trying to grow it as big as we can. Help as many people as we can. We appreciate any assistance that we get. And we do this off of our own bats uh, just to give back to the community because that's the kind sort of people that we are. Isn't that right? So share it far and wide. If you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel. That's growing nicely, the YouTube channel. Uh, but share it to people who you think that this sort of information can help. If you're lucky enough to have found this podcast already, maybe you could win kudos in your network by sharing it to people who also could be helped by this as well. That's what it's all about. It's all about giving and sharing and you know, helping you guys run better businesses and then ultimately have better lives. So that's the Blink Podcast, Business Lessons from the International Network of Knowledge. Uh, I can't ask any more than for you to just share it, mention it to your friends, uh, suggest it to other people to listen to and help us grow. Uh, and we'll be back pretty soon with episode number six of season three. We are heading towards almost 30, 35 episodes for the whole podcast. It's been fantastic. It's been a great journey. And it's awesome to go back and listen to some of the older episodes. Yeah. Some of the yeah. nuggets. You know, I find myself on my walks listening to my own podcast. How's that? That's how good we are. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good we are here. So it's an amazing scenario. But thank you very much for listening. Thanks for watching. Darren, have a great weekend uh, and just enjoy yourself, behave yourself, and uh, whatever okay. else is your way. Thanks, mate. Good to catch up with everybody. We'll see you all soon. Take care. Peace.